So moving on, let me explain why you might be slow at the top of your deadlift. Some of you guys rip the barbell off the floor and then come to a grinding halt and you might not even be able to lock the weight out. So reason number one why you might be slow from the knees up is because you're focused too much on speed. I'm taking this one from Mark Bell because I've experienced this personally. I relied too much on my speed. I would always pull the barbell as fast as I possibly could. And in training, I would always handle between 80 to 90% of my uh, current one rep max. And I would move that weight as fast as I could. Well, my body got so used to moving weight fast that once the weight became heavy, I wasn't able to grind the, the rep out because I was focused so much on speed that I didn't have the muscular strength to finish the grind. So what happened in my first powerlifting meet is I was in the warm-up room, I'm ripping the bar off the floor, I'm showing off, I got my chest puffed out, the barbell's flying off the floor, I've got awesome speed, right? So I go to my first attempt, rip it off the floor, easy. My second attempt, same thing, a little bit harder, but it flies off the floor. Now my, thir my third attempt, which was at the time, uh, wouldn't be a personal record for me, I ripped that thing off the floor, and because it was heavy, it wanted to fight back, right? And as soon as it started to put up some resistance, I dropped it, and I thought, oh, I couldn't do it. Um, but looking back on it, if I would have just grinded the rep out, if I would have had the muscular strength to move the weight, I think I would have finished that. So, like Mark Bell says, don't rely so much on your speed, you actually need the muscular strength to grind out a rep. So I understand that for a lot of you beginners, this might not be the case, but if it is you, if you do think you can relate to this, start slowing your reps down a little bit and really feeling the movement and really moving the weight with your muscles rather than just using that momentum to rip the bar off the floor and finish the pull. Reason number two why you might be stuck at the top of your deadlift, and this is the biggest reason, is because you are letting your back round over. Think about that kinetic chain I talked about earlier where you're applying force into the ground, it's traveling up your legs, through your spine, and down to the bar. Well, that energy is dissipating in your round back. But the main reason is, once you get it up to your knees, your back is in a round position, and now you're fighting to get that spine back into a neutral position. Your upper back is not meant to flex and extend during the deadlift. Your entire back is not meant to flex and extend during the deadlift. Your spinal erectors and your lats are meant to isometrically hold your spine in position. So if you deadlift with a neutral spine, if you're at your knees and you already have a neutral spine, it's gonna be very easy to lock the weight out. But if your spine is rounded over once you're at your knees, you're gonna to come to a grinding halt because now you're doing a spinal curl to try to get the barbell into the finished position and try to get your spine into that neutral position it should be. Now I understand that there are some elite 800, 900 pound deadlifters who purposefully round their back in order to shorten the range of motion, but those of you watching this are probably beginners. You don't need to worry about rounding your back in order to uh, shorten the pull. You need to focus on using the deadlift for getting stronger not necessarily just to get better at the deadlift or deadlift 900 pounds. Keep your back flat, strengthen your lats and your spinal erectors, all the muscles in your posterior chain by keeping your back flat throughout the entire pull. Ah. So, reason number three, Reason number three, why your deadlift is slow from the knees up, why you're having trouble with your lockout, is because you're not engaging your hamstrings at the start of the pull. As soon as you pull the barbell off the floor, your butt will tuck under you, your hamstrings shorten, they run and hide. So once you have the barbell at your knees and your hamstrings and glutes are supposed to be doing their job of helping you lock that weight out, your hamstrings are sitting on the sidelines watching as all the other muscles do its job. So. I've made a video about this, about hamstring engagement, and I'll put a link up to the video. Which side? It'll be on this side. So I'll put a link up to that video. It's about uh, Romanian deadlift or engaging your hamstrings uh, when you're deadlifting. So what I would suggest is once you get into position, push your hips up to engage your hamstrings and then pull yourself down into the correct starting position. Feel that hamstring engagement before you even pull the barbell off the floor. While you're pulling it off the floor, your hamstrings should be shaking, should be quivering because they're working so hard. Once it's at your knees, they're ready to do their job and lock that weight out for you. So the three movements that I'm going to suggest for uh, improving your lockout strength are pretty much all centered, all focused on your back muscles, your upper back muscles. So number one, I think the best 
builder for upper back strength are farmer's walks. Farmer's walks are great because anyone can do them. They don't require any instruction other than stand up tall, look straight ahead. Uh, and you don't have to focus on anything like squeezing, contracting, and this and that. You just pick up some heavy weight and walk with it for an extended period of time. It also helps to improve your grip strength, which is obviously important for the deadlift. So what I would suggest is performing three sets of 30 seconds or 100 feet of walking with as heavy of weight as you can. Slowly over time, you can increase the weight. I would suggest doing this twice a week, maybe after your your two lower body days, your squat day, or your deadlift day. Incorporate them twice a week, and you will notice a difference in your upper back size and strength. Movement number two, rows. Any type of row, barbell rows, pull-ups, inverted rows, dumbbell rows. Do them hard and heavy. Do them for higher reps. I would suggest three to four sets of 10 to 15 reps. You can do this twice a week. Start incorporating it at the end of your workout. Any type of row will build your upper back. So movement number three, back to the snatch grip deadlifts. I would suggest snatch grip block pulls to increase your lockout strength. Snatch grip deadlifts, because of the wide grip, will stress your upper back and your middle back better than a lot of other exercises. So the reason we do a block pull is just so you can handle a little bit heavier weight to really overload that top portion. If you get good at pulling with that wide grip, once you move your hands in to a more neutral conventional position, it's gonna feel so much easier. I would suggest doing these for two to three sets of six to eight reps with 70 to 80% of your one rep deadlift max. Using straps for this is okay. So that's it guys, I really hope that helps. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them. And if you guys have any other suggestions about how to increase your uh, speed from the ground to your knees or from your knees to lockout, go ahead and drop that down below and we'll get a little discussion going. Uh, so we can all help each other out because that's the whole point of this stuff. So, thanks for watching. Until next time, Dragon Time!